What's up guys? We are Southwest Active Explorers and today we're building a four-link suspension underneath the front end of our CJ7 rock crawling buggy. If you're new to the channel and you're into off-roading, rock crawling, and all things Jeep, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications. We've been building a CJ7 into a rock crawler or a buggy, and this week what we're trying to do is put a four-link suspension underneath the front end of this thing. We got with Barnes four-wheel drive and got a bunch of mounts and different components from them. We're also running their trusses as well, and we're using their link mounts and link kits to set up our four-link suspension. Uh, you still kind of got to know a little bit what you're doing because it's just a DIY kit. We uh, mocked everything up with PVC, sat down and started just looking at where do things fit, what kind of angles can we get, you know, shooting for desirable numbers, but kind of working within the parameters that the Jeep is giving us. Anyways, we're going to kind of walk you through what we did, how things are working, and just kind of show you what we ended up with. So we ended up making a plumb bob on each side of the frame to hang down and we used that plumb, plumb bob to measure off of so that we could perfectly center the axle underneath the Jeep. Once the axle was perfectly centered and we had our mounts, you know, pretty much where we wanted them, we made our PVC link arms, uh, cut them to length, and then we actually put some relief cuts in the end of the PVC link arms so that we could slide our hind joints in and hose clamp them on there. Uh, once they were hose clamped on there, it gave us a good chance to kind of eyeball everything and move the axle just a little bit. We weren't able to move it a lot because they, they didn't want to completely hold together, but it gave us a good feel that things were going to work well enough to be a little confident when cutting up the DOM. Really didn't want to make a mistake with DOM because it's expensive. But the uh, PVC link arm method worked pretty well. I uh, highly recommend setting up the plumb bobs so that you can center your axle and get everything where you plan on it being. Uh, it, it landed basically exactly where I want it. I'm going to be able to bump stop pretty much exactly where I wanted. Um, we're close to oil pan, but not too close. So I think everything's going to work. So a previous owner of this thing had built it into a buggy uh, and then they cut all the mounts off and everything and sold it as a bare chassis. And that's how I bought it. Uh, there were some mounts right here it looks like. They probably had their lower link mounts right there. And when deciding where to mount the lowers, I personally didn't want to try to mount them over top of that plate and weld onto there. It just it didn't look like it was going to work well. So we just decided to go uh, right after those with our frame side mount. And we tried to straighten them out a little bit, kick them out, knowing that we were going to have a little bit of uh, angle on the link arm and it, it worked out really nicely so then what we what we ended up doing is we know we wanted our upper links a little bit shorter than our lower links to maintain a little bit of caster angle through the suspension travel so we ended up measuring what this was we figured out what 75 percent would be for our upper link and that just wasn't going to work and i'll show you why on the top end but really, we started on the act, on the lower links, got those where we wanted, and then we made the upper links work along with that. So let's go up to the top. So after doing our lowers, we came up here to the top, and we angled our upper mounts on the axle side, just straight out to where they needed to be, centered them on the axle, and those were honestly really easy to locate. Uh, like I said, we took we did the math on what 75% would be for our upper link length. And when we came back here, we had a couple limitations. There's uh, some plates welded on for frame stiffening. And if we go in front of it, we would have been quite a bit shorter than 75%. And if we come back and go on top of it, uh, we're a little bit over 75%. And I chose to go over instead of under. So we basically went where we could. And then we also tried to work within the parameters of having some uh, frame side link separation. And we've got about four to four and a half inches. I think it's going to be okay. So triangulation. We ended up getting about 30 degrees of triangulation on the uppers. And then we managed to get another 10 degrees of triangulation on the lowers. 
Uh, I think that's going to be about what we need. I was shooting for 40, and I'm fairly happy with that. We did notice as we cycled the suspension up and down, we tried to move the axle side to side, and we were unable to. There's no side to side play, so I'm fairly convinced that it's going to locate itself as it needs to. When we first started getting ready to do this, we started diving into anti-squat figures or anti-dive, you know, separation angles, all, all that. We started really getting into the math of it all and trying to figure out well, where exactly theoretically should things be. And the more we started setting things up and working with it, we realized that with this engine, in this frame, you know, with these axles, just with everything the way that it is, it's going to work the way that it's going to work. There's only a couple ways it can be set up and no, the numbers aren't going to be ideal, but you got to work within the constraints of what the Jeep will let you build. So we kind of started worrying less about the numbers. We shot for as much uh, triangulation angle on the uppers as possible and same with on the lowers and kind of what we ended up with is what we ended up with. Uh, in a perfect world, it would be a little bit different, but we got to do what we got to do and that's pretty much what everyone's going to find out is you're not going to be able to have the ideal perfect by numbers set up. Uh, really happy with how all of this turned out. We've flexed it out and kind of cycled it up and down and it, it moves really nice. I, I think it's going to work really well for us. Um, yeah. Only one way to find out, right? Yeah. Only, Send it. Only one way to find out. Just got to finish the rest of the Jeep so we can take her out. Um, it wasn't too bad. It was like two afternoons worth of work. We honestly could have done it in less. Uh, if you're contemplating doing this, get your kits from Barnes and it's not going to be difficult. Mock it up with PVC and then cut your DOM and you'll be pretty happy. As you guys can see, she's got droop for days. The cycles through the range of motion pretty well. Uh, really happy with how it all turned out. I need to go through and do some more welding. Kind of finish weld the majority of this stuff because it's all tacked. Uh, I'm going to get busy with that. Anyhow guys, thanks for watching. If you're thinking of building the four link, make sure you hit up Barnes. They've got everything you're going to need. As always, stay active and keep exploring.